Let me know when we're ready. We're ready. Okay. We thank you for joining us on this Shabbat, and all praise and glory go to the Most High, Ahaya, Ashar Ahaya, Yeshaya the Christ, and Wawawak, our Mother, the Holy Spirit. You know, it's a shame that we don't know how to pray. It is. It's, it's pretty sad that we don't know how to pray. Uh, today, what we're going to do, we had this teaching about a year and a half, about a year and a half ago, but we're going to, we, we're going to combine some teachings that I did in the past. Um, there's a teaching that I did on prayer about three years ago when we first started teaching and getting into this. So we're going to understand what prayer is. And the best prayer is Yeshaya with the Lord's Prayer. But people don't know what the Lord's Prayer means. People don't have an understanding of the Lord's Prayer. So our first section is going to be about the Lord's Prayer. And then we're going to learn on how to pray. Okay? How are we to pray? What are we to pray about? So this teaching is very in-depth on prayer. I pray that it blesses everyone who watches. Um, it's going to be very detailed. So I give Father all the glory and praises as we learn about prayer. And I'm still doing my notes on it, but we're going to know who we are, going all the way back to Genesis. Okay? Take a look at this. Look at the Israelite women before the movement, before the women's lip movement in the 70s. Look how our women dress, and look how they gathered together with the scriptures. But then came the feminist movement in the 70s. We're told you that, you know what? You don't have to wear those skirts. You don't have to wear those dresses. You can wear pants. You can be a man. You can do anything a man can do. Okay? The next picture is, um, and that's not just black children. That's any child of the most high. You have failed as a parent if your children are doing that. But well, they're just praying. That's all. But who are they praying to and with? You're failing if your child is doing that. Okay? Next week, we're going to talk on uh, tithes. A lot of questions. Tithe was a lot. 10%. We're going to debunk all that stuff next week with tithing. A lot of people will say, well, you know what? Because you're in a, uh, in a house, you're not asking for tithes. I, I was running across the teaching and this guy was saying, people who teach against tithing, it's because they're in house churches. They don't have churches all over the world like we do. Hmm. My question exactly, what does that have to do with it? All right, our next holy day, September 10th, Memorial of Trumpets, and it's our fall holy day. Okay. Next feast, that is a feast, by the way. The next feast is the Feast of Tabernacles. During the Feast of Trumpets, you just go back. During the Feast of Trumpets, we're going to have a teaching on what the Memorial of Trumpets is. So the 10th, we're, we're doing a feast? That's a feast, yes. Okay. It's the fall feast. That's right before that, Okay, so um, we're going to learn about the Memorial of Trumpets and what we're supposed to be doing. Okay? Feast of Tabernacles. This is a very important, all of them are important, but this one is about the resurrection. We're going to have a teaching on that as well. Day of Atonement. Sundown September 19th to sundown September 20th. Fast. It's a dry fast. No food, no water. That's the thing. The only day that the Most High says that we afflict our souls. Okay? And we're going to find out why with the Day of Atonement. So the Day of Atonement is very, very, very important when it comes to the coming of the Shadow. We're going to find out how very important it is. Because if you're doing something else on the Day of Atonement, you're going to be caught. All right? So let's talk about how to pray. The first one is, um, let's explain Yeshaya's prayer. All right? 
That's our first section. We're going to explain Yeshaya's prayer. Okay? First of all, there is nothing insignificant about the Bible. There is nothing insignificant in the Bible. Everything from Genesis, the first chapter, to Revelation, to 22nd, the 22nd chapter, is very, very important. Even to where David had to go out and get foreskins in order to get married. That's very important. We'll discuss that when we talk about David in a couple of weeks, sometime soon. Alright, so we're going to get back to chapter 5. I'm sorry, Matthew chapter 6. This is going to be verses 5 through 13. Now we know that the Lord Prayer starts at verse 9. Okay? So we're going to be in and out of Matthew, the ninth, the, the sixth chapter. But Yeshua gives us some insights on prayer. Let's say he says, even though it's a couple of verses, what he says in a couple of verses, you can do four, five, seven, eight, ten teachings on. Okay? So let's read Matthew chapter 6, verses 5 through 13. We're going to read verses 5 and 6 first. Let's read it. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are. For they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. So we shouldn't go street preaching. That's not street preaching. Mm -hmm. That's something different. He said, be not as the hypocrites are. Okay, street preaching is something different. Six. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy Father which is in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. He shall reward thee openly. So, praying is not about going and standing in front of a church, yelling out all kinds of stuff. That's not what prayer is about. Okay? Prayer is about being open and honest with the most high. Okay? Now you can have a you can have a group prayer and you could, you know, have somebody in the midst of that group prayer praying and everybody is in agreement. That's fine. You can come against strongholds in prayer like that as well. Okay, but not stand in front of a in front of anybody. Well, we want to bless Pastor such and such, and we want to bless his finances, and we want to bless um, Elder, I mean Minister Richard, and we want to bless his testosterone surgery, and no, <laughs> that's not how you pray. Okay, verse seven. But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions. Do use not vain repetitions. Don't be praying for the same thing over and 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 over again. Do not be vain repetition. Go ahead. For they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. So much speaking, that means the long, drawn out, hour and a half prayers. Much talking, thinking that they're go thinking that Father is going to hear their prayers. Verse 8. Be not ye therefore like unto them, <coughs> for your Father knoweth what things ye have need of before ye ask him. He knows before you even open your mouth. Yes. When you say, um, when it says, do not pray in repetition. Yes. Does that mean don't say like the same thing over and over again about the soul? Like, let's say, for example, our prayer in our phone. Mm -hmm. Going room to room to room to room. If you do it, like, regularly, is it praying in repetition? Or do you have to switch it up? Or how does that? No, you should pray through your house. Um, you should switch it up though. You shouldn't have the same prayer 
going into each and every room. You shouldn't have the same so, prayer. Okay, so that, that just means you don't have the same prayer and not don't do it, right? Right. It means not having the same prayer or it means not having a long drawn out prayer. Okay? Okay. All right, let's get into now the Lord's Prayer. Mm -hmm. Verses verse 9, and we're going to go through these scriptures again. Verse 9. After this manner, therefore, pray ye, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. We're going to explain what that means. Verse 10. Thy kingdom come. We're going to explain what that means. Go ahead. Thy will be done. Uh-huh. In earth as it is in heaven. We're going to explain that. Verse 11. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. We kind of explained that last week. We're going to explain it this week. Verse 12. And forgive our debtors. And give us our debts. Uh huh. As we forgive our debtors. Mm, I had to learn that the hard way. Verse 13. And lead us not into temptation. Uh huh. But deliver us from evil. Uh huh. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Oh, alrighty. All right, Yeshua gave them instructions on how to pray. He gave them instructions on how they were to pray. Okay? Now, we take these instructions, and let's find out what the Bible, throughout the entire Bible says. Like I said, Yeshia says maybe one or two sentences, but those one or two sentences, you can have three, four, five different teachings from just what he said, because it's so wise, and it was so wise. Let's get back to Matthew chapter 6, verse 9, and let's read that again. Matthew 6, 9. After this manner, therefore pray ye, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. So what was Shashia saying when he was saying, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Okay. Nobody reads. Nobody knows the power of prayer anymore. Nobody looks at the Bible for understanding. There shouldn't be a teaching on how to pray because the Bible tells us how to pray. But we're going to put this out there. So let's explain verse number 9. And why don't we use precepts to explain Matthew 6, 9. Let's go to Matthew chapter 23, verses 1 and 2. Matthew chapter 23, verses 1 through 2, and then we're going to skip in this chapter. All right, let's read that. Then spake Yeshua to the multitude and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. That means they, they, they sit in the, in the best part of the synagogue, what they think is the best part of the synagogue. Okay, hallowed be thy name, right? So let's get down to verse 5. This is the same chapter, Matthew chapter 23. I have a question about this one. Okay. When it says they sit in Moses' seat, right. would that also mean that the Moses was a priest? Would that also mean when they sit in Moses' seat that they're trying to be like Moses, like mm -hmm. the priest? Mm -hmm. something like that. Right. They're trying to emulate Moses, and they couldn't emulate Moses. No, they weren't even, they weren't even close. No. All right? Okay, so Matthew chapter 23, verses 5 through 10. This is very key. Let's read it. But all of their works they do for, the, for to be seen of men. All their works they do to be seen. Remember, Yeshua said, in secret are you to pray, right? Okay, go ahead. They may broad their placularies. placularies. Uh huh. And enlarge the borders of their garments. Their placularies, if you don't know what a placularie is, it was the big wide thing. Oh. That went on their shoulders. Oh. <laughs> what about the thing that goes on their shoulders? <laughs> Was it? What is that cube on their foreheads? 
Who? The Pharisees. Remember when they were when they were fast, they would have this thing. Uh, yeah, they would strap. They, they would put a cube on their forehead. Catholics get it from. I think that's what it is. It's a small what, leather box containing. Yeah, that's a black layer. It goes on the head. But then they are like fasting or something. It has huge no. text on the film right by Jewish men at morning prayer as a reminder to keep the law. Right. So it was a big cube that they put on their head. But they were only supposed to wear it during the teaching and prayers. They were wearing it all over the time, all the time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's what it is. Let's read. Yeah, I'm going to wear that though. <clears throat> and love the uppermost rooms at feast, and the chief sit the chief seats in the synagogues, uh -huh. and greetings in the markets, and to be called of men. Rabbi, rabbi. So they love that. They would dress themselves up all the time and they would walk through the markets and they would walk through the markets and they would love the they love the attention all right verse 8 but listen to what Yeshaya says but be not ye called rabbi for one is your master even Yeshaya and all ye are brethren why did he say even Yeshaya because he's not a master either. correct correct he was giving reverence to the father Okay? He was saying that don't even call me master because there's only one. Go ahead, verse 8. And call, no, and call no man your father uh -huh. upon the earth, for one is your father which is in heaven. So no calling anybody father. Catholic. This is the Catholic religion. Oh. There's some Lutheran religion, there's some sects of Lutheran where they call the so-called pastor, father. So, but we know that Lutherans are spin off from Catholicism anyway. Yes. So my question is, is this regarding in a spiritual manner? Or Correct. So it doesn't apply to your earthly father? No, it doesn't, because you're supposed to call your earthly father, father. This is a spiritual matter. So she can call him Abba, father, or is Abba just like... Well, she can, yeah, Anna Lisa can call him father. Yes. But... If you get a position, if you're in a position like me, I can, I will not have people call me father. Okay? So that, I would not be called father. But, your father is not the one where, you know, the one they gave birth to. You can call him father. Okay? But you can't call no man father like Father Jones or Father whomever, like the Catholics Father and Daddy. the Lutherans. Oh, okay. uh, verse 10. Oh, okay. Oh, neither be ye called masters, for one is your master, even Yeshia. Don't be called masters either. Okay? Let's get Psalms 111, verse 1. Praise ye Ahia. I will praise the Most High with my whole heart and the assembly of the upright and in the congregation. Okay. Matthew 6, 9. Thy kingdom, you know, Matthew 6, 9. Our Father, which is art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Okay. They're not... When we went to Matthew 23, we showed, showed that the Pharisees were not keeping Father's name. Okay? Psalms 111, verse 9. Psalms 111, verse 9. Let's read it. He said, Redemption unto his people. He hath commanded his covenant forever. Holy and reverent is his name. Holy and reverent is Amen. his name. Okay. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. The Pharisees weren't being holy and reverencing Father's name. and Pharisees was not being reverenced to 
father's name because they didn't worship him. That's true. I would say so. So that's why a lot of people don't understand that they did things differently, and that's why Yeshua had to come to set things straight. Right. So everything fathers told us not to do, they did. That would be like Yeshua going to all these Christian churches and telling them, don't do what your pastor is doing because he's leading you to hell. Okay? Hallowed is his name. No one is to be called master. No one should have titles outside of the scriptures. Titles in the scriptures are elder, deacon, bishop. And for the women. That's it. For the women what? They're called. Well, women. There's prophetess. No, not that. It's mothers and daughters. Well, yeah, mothers and daughters. So but you can also be a prophetess. No, but well, where does the first lady come from? First lady comes from a satanic. No, we're not going to go there. All right, so you, no one should have scriptures. No one should have titles outside of the Bible. Reverend, pastor, those are titles outside of the Bible. So no one should have those titles. There is no title called pastor. That is a gift. Okay? And when we go to the spirit world, I believe one of the teachings we'll have in October is about that. All right, let's go to part of Matthew chapter 6, verse 10. Thy kingdom come. What does that mean? What did Yeshua mean when he said, thy kingdom come? Okay? We're going to find out. And we're going to learn something going to learn something. Okay? Let's go to Luke. Chapter 1, verse 26 and 27. Luke chapter 1, verse 26 and 27. Let's learn about prayer, but let's learn a little side note on something really quick. I want to show you something. And this is why the Gospel of Luke should be first in the Bible. Let's read it. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from the Most High unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth. Okay, here comes Gabriel, verse 27. To a virgin, a spouse to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. This is where Christianity really gets it all mixed up. Mary was a virgin. Well, Precepts in Deuteronomy, the 12th chapter, explains on what a virgin is. A woman of maritable age. At this time in the Bible, a woman of maritable age could be as young as 14. Okay? It says to a virgin espoused. That means that they were already married. <laughs> That means they were already married. Yeah. Not what Christianity says. Christianity says that, well, no, they didn't get married till after mm -hmm. Yeshua was born. That's wrong. Read so your like Bibles. Mary was a fornicator, and Joseph took her in because when he felt sorry. And right. That's what Christianity teaches when you really listen to what they're saying. But it says, To a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph, the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. Now, espoused means married or engaged. And in the Hebrew way, they, were, they came together with the contract first, then they came together. And then the token sheet was presented to show she was a virgin. A token sheet. Okay. That's right. Yeah. All right. So let's skip down to verse 30. I wanted to show that just to show that uh, Mary and Dave, Mary and Joseph was married before the angel came on to Mary. Alright, let's 
get Luke chapter 1, verse 30 to 33. Luke 1, 30 to 33. This is thy kingdom come, right? Okay, let's read it. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast favor, found favor with the most... Shall I do? For thou hast found favor with the Most High. Uh -huh. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Yeshia. Yes. 32. He, he shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Most High shall give unto him the throne of his father David. Uh -huh. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. Now when we go into the teaching on the lineage of David, we're going to have this scripture again. And we're going to explain this scripture in verses 32 and 33. Because it says that shall give to him the throne of his father David. But then it says um, he shall reign over the house of Jacob. We all know who Jacob is, right? Israel. Us. Uh, uh. All right. So, this, when Yeshia says, thy kingdom come, the kingdom was already there. Oh, all right. I don't know what just happened. Who are you? I'm an African American, according to Jesse Jackson. Let's see. Where are you? Okay. So, his kingdom is and was already here. His kingdom is not yet to come. The kingdom has been here from the beginning. Okay? So that when he said, thy kingdom come, he said, the kingdom is already here. Okay, let's get an explanation. Let's go to Daniel, the seventh chapter. Verses 1 through 3. In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions of his head upon his bed. Uh huh. Then he wrote the dreams and told the sum of the matters. He told the sum of the matters. Verse 2. Daniel spake and said, I saw in my vision by night, and behold, the four winds of the heavens strove upon the great sea. Uh -huh. And four great beasts came up from the sea, diverse one from another. Now we have had this scripture several times. We have taught on this several times. We know that the four winds are the four um, empires that are to come. Daniel was already in Babylon. So we got Greek, we have um, the Medo-Persia, Greece, and we have Rome. All right, these four big, great beasts came from the sea. Now we know that sea means multitude of people in the Bible. Okay, so Daniel had no clue on what he was seeing. He didn't know what these beasts were because this was a premonition, a future event. Okay, but let's see about the kingdom. Let's get down to verses 13 through 18. Daniel chapter 7, verses 13 to 18. And let's see about the kingdom. And let's read that. I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven. One like the Son of Man came in the clouds of heaven. Go ahead. And came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. Now, I believe that Daniel was born before Yeshia was physically born. Uh, Verse 14. And there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom. Now, dominion, glory, and kingdom. Hmm. Let's see later on where this dominion where this dominion started. So it's saying that the <coughs> Shia. Okay. So, one like the Son of Man yes. with the clouds of heaven. Yes. Came, bless Yeshua. Yes. And came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him here. So, that was Yeshua going to the Father to get his power. Correct. I just realized that I read that so many times. Wow. See? Learn, going to
Oh, let's finish verse 14. Let all people, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away. And his kingdom, that which shall not be destroyed. Okay, so hmm, that leads me to believe that when Yeshua said, Thy kingdom come, that the kingdom is already here. It's been here from the beginning, and I'm going to show you. Verse 15. I, Daniel, oh. was grieved in my spirit in the midst of my body, and the visions of my heart troubled, head troubled the me. The visions just troubled Daniel. But remember, earlier it said dominion. We're going to go there in a minute. Verse 16. I came near unto one of them that stood by and asked him the truth of all this. So he told me and made me know the interpretation of the things. Uh huh. These great beasts, which are four, are four kings, which uh -huh. shall arise out of the earth. We talked about that. Go ahead. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. I think that's a long time, forever and even forever and ever, right? The kingdom uh, is already here, was already here. Some people teach that the kingdom to come is meaning the new heaven and the new earth, that kingdom. Nope, 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 it's already here. The kingdom is already here. Let's go to Daniel chapter 7, verse 27. And let's read it. Of the Most High, whose kingdom, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominions shall serve and obey him. Okay, that's the dominions again. All dominions shall serve him. So the kingdom under the whole heaven. Again, the kingdom is already here. So what do you mean when it, what's, what it talks about when it says the moon? We're going to get to that. In Matthew chapter 25, verses 31 to 34. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. Uh -huh. And before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from goats, from the goats. Mm -hmm. And he shall set the sheep on the right hand, but the goats on the left. Very prophetic. Go ahead. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye, blessed of my father, Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Where are these goats going? And the new truth, the new kingdom. Are the goats? Yeah, where are these goats going? He said that uh, the sheep are going to be on the right, but the goats are going to be on the left. And the ones that are going to be on the right hand are going to inherit the kingdom. What about the goats? Lake of fire. They're going to the lake of fire. Okay. Okay. That... We're learning something, going to learn something. That just rebuked the rapture. Yeah. That's all you need to rebuke the rapture. <laughs> That's all you need, because there, there ain't no going up. Okay? If you don't have questions, make sure you ask. Don't let him keep going and don't say nothing. All right. Now, we talked about dominion and dominion and dominion. You have to go to Genesis, the first chapter, which we're going to go a little later to understand that this kingdom has been around from the beginning. Let's go to Revelation, the 21st chapter. Revelation chapter 21, verses 1 through 4. All right, let's read that. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. And there was no more sea. Okay, so we all know that this earth is going to die. Yes, pass away. And we know that this earth is going to die because Yeshia is currently building the new Jerusalem. Right. Okay. Verse 2. And I saw John, the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from the Most High out of heaven 
prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Uh huh. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of the Most High is with me, and he will dwell with them that and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and the Most High himself shall be with them, and be there the Most High. Alright, so in Revelation chapter 21, verse 3, we know that the kingdom is already here because all throughout the book of Jeremiah and all throughout the book of Ezekiel, that phrase is there. And they shall be his people and the Most High will be with them. The kingdom is already here. Verse 4. And the Most High shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, uh -huh. neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. This is the New Jerusalem. This is why it is so important to get yourself together now. So important that you get yourself together now. Because once you die, that's it. It's not going to be like Jonah. Once you die, that's it. I'm not, I'm not, gonna, I'm not understanding when you're saying the kingdom is already here. Okay. So let's go to Genesis 126. Let's go to Genesis 126. I was saving that for later. I think it's on the slide later. But let's go to Genesis 126. Now, we read in Daniel that man was that the dominion was given to us. Right? True that. Okay, so let's read Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. And the Most High said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea. That's the kingdom. Go ahead. And over the fowl of the air. Go ahead. And over the cattle. Uh -huh. And over all the earth. Uh -huh. And over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. That's the kingdom. Now we read that in Daniel, the seventh chapter. I'm lost. Okay. About the kingdom. Yeah. The kingdom is here. So the is the kingdom? That's what I think we're trying to figure out like what is, what the, is kingdom the kingdom and yeah. what is the meaning, like the definition. That's what I think I'm not getting it. You know what I mean? Okay, let's Google kingdom. And then let's Google dominion. Well dominion, that's very simple. Dominion is you are held over something. You are you have power over something. Control. Okay? You are in control of it. Remember, I think you all are getting it lost because man lost that. And so, I'll explain that later. Kingdom, a country, state, or territory ruled by king or queen. Correct. We lost that. I think that's where it's not, you're not understanding. When Yeshua said, Thy kingdom come, we have always had the kingdom. Genesis 1.26 was the beginning of it before Adam was even created. Adam, so Adam and Eve had dominion. They had the, the kingdom. kingdom. Yes. They had everything. Yes. So Adam and Eve, okay, they reigned. And right. they lost it. And then they lost it. But in the book of Daniel, Daniel was stating that you'll have there be you'll be you'll have dominion again. The kingdom has never went away. The kingdom has always been here. We lost it because of sin. And we okay. Okay. And so when you say you take the kingdom back, no, not yet. When when you say it comes back, you're gonna take. The Correct. Yeah. Correct. When Yeshua came and died on the cross, what did he die for? Sin. Yes. So we're sorry. Okay, I don't want to get. We're not the kingdom, are we? No. We're not that. the kingdom. Are we the kingdom? That's what, like our like the tribes. Are we the kingdom? Yes. Okay. <laughs> we are the kingdom. Now the kingdom, the kingdom we don't own. We're, right now Esau is 
running the kingdom. Okay, so they're running the kingdom, but we are the kingdom. Right. It says a country, state, so or territory. I was not a man. Oh, I get it. You understand now? Oh, the kingdom I get it. Come. <laughs> All earth is the kingdom. It says country, state, or territory ruled by a king or queen. No, you can't. Th you have to think of it like this. It's not one king. We all were set to be queens and kings over the earth. The earth over is the, the kingdom. Over God's chosen people. So the earth is the kingdom. We were chosen from the beginning. So, so we were. This was supposed to be our world, but we failed. And I think I'm, I, I explained this a little later in the teaching. Okay, so just stick with me. Hold on the kingdom. Make your little notes about the kingdom because you're going to get an understanding. But Genesis 1.26 started the kingdom for Adam and Eve. Yeah. The kingdom has always been here. That's why I put in Daniel to show that the kingdom has always been here. Yeshia said the kingdom has always been here. There's going to be a new kingdom in Revelation, the 21st chapter. It's not going to be this earth, because this earth is sickness, disease, and everything. It's because of the Gentiles. Thank you. Yes. All right, so the kingdom was set up before man was created. I get it now. I wasn't getting to understand. All right? And just, I just put this in here because this would be a good time to pray. If a dinosaur was chasing you, this would be a good time to pray right now. Okay? Alright, so we get an understanding on thy kingdom come, right? Yes. Alright, we'll get more of an understanding later, I believe. Now, the next part of Matthew 16 is, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Oh, okay. Okay, so the kingdom is already here, so now, what will be done in earth as it is in heaven? This is a scripture that we use, especially on the holy days, because on the holy days, what's being done in heaven is what should be done here. In the earth, yeah. So the holy days, the Sabbath. As above, so is below. Oh, no. Don't say that. All right, Matthew. Don't say that one. Matthew chapter 12, verse 10. Let's keep focus. Matthew chapter 12, verse 10. Done on earth, done in heaven. Let's read it. And behold, there was a man which had his hand withered. And they asked him, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath days that they might accuse him? So he then said that this man, are you going to heal him on the Sabbath day? Remember, the Pharisees were very, very strenuous about doing anything on the Sabbath day. To the point where they were um, they were binding people up with the Sabbath day. But they weren't doing it. All right. So the Pharisees were trying to set the Shia up. So let's see what the Shia had to say about this in Matthew chapter twelve, verses thirteen through twenty. Matthew chapter twelve. Verse 13 and 13 through 20. Be done on earth as it is in heaven. Let's read it. Then said he to the man, Stretch forth thine hand. And he stretched it forth. And it was restored whole like as the other. It was restored whole. So Yeshua healed his hand. Go ahead. Then the Pharisee went out and held a council against him. How they might destroy him. Uh huh. But when Yeshia knew it, he withdrew himself from thence, and great multitudes followed him, and he healed them all. He healed some of them. All of them. He healed them all. He lost all. So the Pharisees saw that Yeshia healed this one man with this withered hand. So then the Pharisees, Yeshia said, You know what? I'm not only just going to heal him. Anybody who comes now, they're going to be healed on the Sabbath day. What that tells us? 
we can heal on the Sabbath. Well, some people <laughs> teach you that that tell us that Yeshua was lawless, that he broke the Sabbath. How? And that's oh. what's going on. They saying yeah, they saying Jesus. I know better. I know the scripture. All right, let's read. Let's read 19 to 20. And let's read it. Thy uh, on earth as it is in heaven. Go ahead. And charge them that they should not make him known, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, Behold, my servant, who I have chosen, my beloved, and whom my soul is well pleased. Uh -huh. I will put my spirit upon him, and he shall show judgment to the Gentiles. Uh -huh. He shall not strive, nor cry, neither shall any man hear his voice in the streets. Yep. A bruised reed shall, not, shall he not break, and smoking flax he shall not quench, till he send forth judgment unto victory. He sent forth judgment unto victory. Now, Yeshia is quoting from Isaiah. Right? Right. So we need right. to look to see what Isaiah said. Mm -hmm. Right? Uh -huh. Right. Even Yeshia was Why saying, look up and so, see. Check out what I'm saying. Right? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh -huh. Be done on earth as it is in heaven. Let's go to Isaiah 42. Isaiah chapter 42 verses 1 through 4, and let's read what Yeshaya was quoting from, because Yeshaya probably gave it to Isaiah in the first place. Let's read Isaiah chapter 42, verses 1 through 4, or oh, the Holy Spirit gave it to Isaiah, and of course the Holy Spirit, being our mother, Yeshaya, is there with her, so I think he kind of knew what was being said in the book of Isaiah, and let's read that. Behold, my servant, whom I uphold, mine elect, and whom my soul is delighted. Uh -huh. I have put my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. Hold up. Wait a minute. Is that what he said? Verse 18. I will put my spirit upon him, and he shall show judgment to the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. Exactly what is written in the book of Isaiah. Verse 2, he shall not cry, nor lift up, nor cause his voice to be heard in the streets. Oh, wait a minute. Verse 19, he shall strive, nor cry, neither shall any man hear his voice in the streets. Hmm. What about the bruised reed? A bruised bruise reed? A bruised reed shall not he not break, and the smoking flax shall he not quench. He shall bring forth judgment unto truth. Verse 4. He shall not fail nor be discouraged. So he hath set judgment in the earth, and the isles shall wait for his law. Hmm, the Old Testament's done away with, huh? Wonderful thing what you can use. Somebody, well, the Old Testament done away with. Well, let's go and let's read Matthew 12, verses 16 and 20. But then let's go to Isaiah 42. Now, if the Old Testament is done away with, why is Yeshua quoting directly out of the Old Testament? Isaiah 42, verse 16. And, wonderful on what he said about the earth, do on earth as it is done in heaven. Okay? Now let's go and let's learn something else. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 30, verse 18, and then 20 and 21. Isaiah 30, 18, 20, verses 20 and 21. Okay? Go ahead. And therefore will the Most High wait, that he may be gracious unto you, and therefore will he be exalted, that he may have mercy upon you. For the Most High is a power of judgment. Blessed are all they that wait for Him. Blessed are all they that wait for them. Do on earth as it is done in heaven. Verse 20. 
And though the Most High give you the bread of adversity uh -huh. and the water of affliction, uh -huh. yet shall not thy teachers be removed into a corner any more, but thine eyes shall see thy teachers. Thy eyes shall see thy teachers, verse 21. And thine ears shall hear a word behind thee, saying, This is the way, walk ye in it. Walk ye turn to the right hand, and when ye turn to the left. That's doing the work of the Most High. Do the work of the Most High because the same work that you are doing on earth is done in heaven. Same thing. Praise and worship. It's done in heaven also. The same thing. So the feast days? The feast days. They're done in heaven and they're done on earth. Everything that we do down to the Shabbat Everything that we do, it's mirrored in heaven. That's why we're told to do it on earth. Would you say the uh, statutes and command, the laws and statutes? Yes. So even in heaven, the angels is not walking around with their head lined up and no. Any there statues? you go, brother. No. Let me tell you No. No. <laughs> what? You cannot use the word to fit your own agenda. And that's what Christianity does. They use the word to fit their own agenda. But you can't do that. <laughs> All right, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 24 to 28. 1 Corinthians 15, 21 to 28. On 24 to 28, sure. All right. Maria is supposed to be helping you out too. Let's read it. Then cometh the end, when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to the Most High, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. Yep. For he must reign till the half, till he has put all enemies under his feet. Uh huh. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. Uh -huh. yeah. For he hath put all things on it. But when he saith all things, it is manifest that he is accepted, uh -huh. which did put all things under him. Mm -hmm. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, uh -huh. then shall the Son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him, that the Most High may be all and all. All and all. Now how is all this going to happen if you're not doing the work on earth that's been done in heaven? It's not going to happen. No. It's going to hell and burn eternity. How are you going to be a witness to all this if you're not doing the work on earth that is done in heaven? Okay? The couple of things that were not on the Most High's plan. Death and animal sacrifices. Mm -hmm. Those two were not in his plan when he said in Genesis 1 1, when he created the earth in Genesis 1 1. When he said, and the Most High said, let there be whatever, and it was, it wasn't in his plan to have death. You don't read about death in Genesis, the first chapter. And the Most High said, let there be death. And it was so. <laughs> so no. That's not what happened. The Most High created the fowls of the air, the fish of the sea, for man to sacrifice no. for a sin offering. No. That's not in Genesis. No. Okay? It was never done from the beginning. For shame. So now we understand on earth as it is in heaven. But let's understand Matthew 6, 11. Give us this day our daily bread. Now this is probably the easiest for everybody here to understand. Because we just had this last week. That means we're supposed to eat bread daily. Yeah. All right, if he feeds yeah. us... This day, he'll feed us the next day and the next day. 
So let's run, so let's get an understanding on what Yeshia really meant. What's the word? In Matthew chapter 6, verse 25 and 26. Okay? Matthew chapter 6, verse 25 and 26. Okay? Now we're getting an understanding on when the Bible is talking about eating, it's not really talking about food. We're starting to get an understanding now. All right, Matthew 6, 25, 26. Let's get it. Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life what ye shall eat. Oh, no, your shy wants me to starve. Go ahead. Or what ye shall drink. He wants me to die of thirst. Go ahead. Nor yet for your body what ye shall put on. Oh, he wants me to be naked. Go ahead. Is not the life more than meat and the body than remnant. So, Christianity will have you thinking that, well, don't worry about what, you don't give thought on what you can eat. You want a pork chop sandwich? Go ahead and get you a pork chop sandwich. You want some pork chop sandwich with, some, with a side of shrimp? Whoa, wait, wait a minute. <laughs> this is good, brother, brother. Okay, so Behold the fowls of the air, for they... So not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, uh -huh. yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are they not much better than they? So now Yeshua does, he puts a little twist on it. And he said, look at the birds. Have you ever saw a hungry kitchen? No. 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 They seem hungry when you try to feed them though. You never saw, have you ever saw a hungry bird, period? A bird just, oh, my belly. I ain't talking about cartoons. I'm talking about real birds. No, because Father takes care of them. How much more will Father take care of you? Let's skip down to verse 31. Okay, let's skip down to verse 31. And this goes into the repetitive prayer one also. All right, Matthew chapter 6, 31 to 33. Let's read that. Therefore, Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? Don't think about what you're going to do. Read. For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. So he's saying that those that's what they do. They concern themselves with all that worldly stuff. Go ahead. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. Your Father in heaven knows that you need clothes and all that other stuff. There you go. Verse 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of the Most High. Seek ye first the kingdom of getting clothes. To seek the kingdom of the Most High. Seek ye first of getting some steak. The Most High. Seek ye first of looking for your shoes to wear. Seek ye first the kingdom of the Most High. And what else? And his righteousness. And his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. It's going to be added unto you if you're seeking his righteousness. So what he's saying is that no matter what you're going through, or not, no matter what you need, that Father is going to provide for you. Yes, he is. All you have to do is pray. pray. When and not pray for your material things. No. Not pray for shirts. Pray for not pray salvation. for pants. Not pray for drawers. Not Come. pray for socks. Come. Not pray for belts. Come. Not pray for money. Not pray for jobs. Not pray for cars. No, no. But pray that your salvation, that you make it at least to the wilderness. Come on. You want to make it all the way. Yeah, but you'll get a fighting chance then. If you don't make it to the wilderness, um, you have to die. You have to be martyred. Beheaded. Okay? We are to look to Father to provide spiritual food. We are to look for Father. The food that he's talking about, it's spiritual. Psalms 23 and 1. A Psalm of David. The Most High is my shepherd. I shall not want. I shall not want. 
Christians think, oh, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He leadeth me and guide me and all this other stuff. I shall not want. We should not want for anything. I want a better position at work. I shall not want. I want my husband to take a shower every night. I shall not want. <laughs> oh. Uh, First Kings 3. Five, the there. Yeah, that is where I do want. Do I get what I want? No. Uh, I shall not. There you go. <laughs> First Kings chapter 3. 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 5 to read. Alright, let's read it. And Gideon the Most High appeared to Solomon in a dream by night. And the Most High asked, What I shall give thee? The Most High asked, What shall I give thee? The Most High came to Solomon in a dream. Who wouldn't want the Most High to come to them in a dream? And he said, ask what I shall give thee. Let's see, verse uh, of 6. And Solomon said, that thou hast showed unto thy servant David my father great mercy, according as he walked before thee in truth, uh -huh. and in righteousness, Go ahead. and in uprighteousness. Uh, upright. upright of heart. Go ahead. With thee. And thou hast kept for him this great kindness, uh -huh. that thou hast given him a son to sit on his throne, as it is this day. So Solomon didn't even acknowledge what the Most High had asked him. He's given reverence to the Most High before he even says anything about what it is that he would like to have. You see that? I just like how it says He's saying, Father, you gave you showed my father great mercy. My father was in the truth. He walked in uprighteousness and he blessed me to sit on his throne. He's given the most high praise beforehand. There's a message in there. Give the most high praise before you start asking things. Verse 7. <laughs> and now, Ahia, my power, thou hast made thy servant king instead of David, my father. And I am but a little child. Uh -huh. I know not how to go or, to, or come in. He said, I don't know how to govern your people. Verse 8. And thy, and thy servant is in the midst of thy people which thou hast chosen, a great people that cannot be numbered nor counted for most He said cannot be numbered or counted. Very, very key that you know he, he knows and understands because he knew what happened when his father numbered and counted the people. Oh, the most I was very displeased with David when he did that. You have to read in the book of First Samuel for that. Okay? Here's something that you don't pray for or pray over. <laughs> McDonald's. <laughs> well, why? Big people Wicked so people. Good. You don't pray over hamburgers that have been made from children. <laughs> Sausages, first of all, it's pork anyway, but that sausage also has human meat in it. Come on. That's why we don't eat McDonald's. Because the they have human the meat in it. The burgers have human meat in it. The chicken the chicken nuggets are plastic. It has plastic in it. Why do you think if you set McDonald's up for four or five months that it doesn't change? It doesn't rock. It doesn't rot. Plastic it stays the rot, same. Plastic. plastic don't rot, Elder. <laughs> but no, nothing <laughs> from McDonald's is good. 
Mm -hmm. If you ate the cookies, you need to repent. <laughs> okay? Let's continue on. First Kings chapter 3. Let's see what so now Solomon, the most I came to Solomon and Solomon and said, What do you want? Solomon didn't go out, well, I want kingdoms, and I want that king destroyed, and I want that. No, he, he gave Father praise. So we praise Father before we start praying. Yeah, that would probably be a good idea. Praise Father before you start asking for Thank stuff. Thank him for what he has done. Thank him for what he has done and what he has given you already. All right? Let's go Set First Kings chapter 3, verses 9 through 12. And let's hear what Solomon had to say. Go ahead. This is the bread of life. Oh, give us this day our daily bread. Let's read it. Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people. Uh-oh, uh-huh. That I may discern between good and bad. For who is able to judge this thy so great a people? He said, give me knowledge. He didn't ask for gold, silver. He didn't ask for bling bling. He didn't ask for cars with rims. He didn't ask for none of that. He didn't ask for mansions or anything like that. He asked for knowledge. Ten. And the speech pleased the Most High. That Solomon had asked this thing. That pleased the Most High. Not only did it please the Most High that he asked that thing, but let's think about it for a second. It pleased them when he said, you know, you gave my father David this, and my father was righteous, and he did this. And I'm blessed to be sitting on the seat of my father's throne. Mm -hmm. Gotta talk to Father that way. Mm -hmm. Verse 11. And the Most High said unto him, Because thou hast asked this thing, and hast not asked for thyself long life. He didn't ask for long life. Neither hast asked riches for thyself. He didn't care about riches for himself. Nor has asked the life of thine enemies. He didn't ask for you. You need to you need to kill John because he slept with my concubine. He didn't ask for the life of anybody. Go ahead. But had asked for thyself understanding to discern judgment. He said, "I asked for you. Asked for understanding. Ask Father for understanding sometimes." You in an issue or you in a bind? Ask Father for understanding to get you through that. Go ahead. Behold, I have done according to thy works. And have, what else? I have given thee a wise and an understanding heart. Uh huh. So that there was none like thee before thee, neither after thee shall any arise like unto thee. There is not a book on this planet that can help you like the book of Proverbs. True that. There's not a book on this planet that can assist you like the book of Ecclesiastes. That's right. Or not even to the wisdom of Solomon or Ecclesiasticus. Not a book. I remember all the books in the Bible, no, not one book break it down like Proverbs do. You can preach on anything. Not Proverbs. saying that all the rest of the books are garbage, but for our day-to-day -day living, Proverbs is there. It has everything. Ecclesiastes, if you haven't read that, read it. It has everything. What's new under the sun? He really goes into specifics about vanity. Okay? John 6. Give us this day our daily bread. What is our daily bread? Go ahead. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. Uh huh. I am that bread of life. I am that bread of life. Go ahead. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness. And are dead. Those people, they ate the manna in the wilderness that was spiritual food that was actually manna. But they're dead from the physical manna. Go ahead. Which come and may eat thereof and not die. Give us this day our daily, daily bread. bread. Give us this, this day, day our scriptures. Amma. Amma. Oh, okay. Amma. Our scriptures. Give us this day our daily bread. 
It's not talking about a loaf of bread. It's not talking about wonder bread. <laughs> With the crust top taken off. Yes, I can't believe Peanut butter and jelly in the middle. It's not talking about that daily bread. It's talking about your script. The word. Give us this day our daily bread. That, Yeshia is saying, you should be in your Bible every single day. Come on now. Who don't read all day? Every day. Every single day you should be in your Bible. Every single day you should be in those scriptures. Give Father his day. Give Father that daily time. John 21, 14 to 17. Because this is what's going to happen if you are eating your daily bread. This is what Yeshua has to say to you. John chapter 21, verses 14 to 17. Let's read it. This is now the third time that Yeshua showed himself to his disciples. After that, he was risen from the dead. So this is the third time. Remember, he showed himself three times to the, to the disciples. And he came, yep. All right. Go ahead. So when they had de denied Yeshia, died, uh -huh. Yeshia said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He said unto him, Yea, hey, Lord. Thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, Feed my lambs. So Yeshua said unto him, Feed my lambs. How do you feed his lambs? With, With the, the word. daily bread. The word. So Peter, he's telling Peter, Feed my lambs. Verse 16. He saith to him again, The second time, uh -huh. Simon, son of Jonas, Lovest thou me? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my sheep. He said, Feed my sheep. Now let's learn some. Let's go and learn something on going to learn something. Now, uh, we're going to wait after this verse, after verse seventeen. So he says it the second time, right? He said, Feed my lambs. Feed my sheep. Verse seventeen. Let's learn something on top of learning something. Go ahead. He saith unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time. He grieved. Why did he grieve? Read. Lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Yeshua saith unto him, Feed my Feed sheep. My Peter sheep. grieved. Why did he grieve? Because Peter denied him three times, right? Right. This is Yeshia. Let's learn something on going to learn something. This is Yeshia forgiving Peter. There you go. Oh, Knowing that lambs are just lambs. Are they younger? Yeah. And then he says sheep, which are older. So let's learn something on learning something. Not only do we know. Give us this day our daily bread is the word of the Most High, and we should be in the word of the Most High constantly, yeah. every single day. But Peter grieved because he knew what he had did to Yeshua. He was not reading his word daily. Yeshua told him that you're going to deny me. Peter, no, I ain't. First thing that you tell somebody, what's going to happen? No, it ain't. Yeah. And it happened. Then all of a sudden, Peter's just wilding out, crying all over the place. Yeshua comes back. Peter knew in the back of his mind, oh, I denied him three times. Yeshua says, feed my lambs, feed my sheep, feed my sheep. He not only told Peter, this is what you're going to do, but I forgive you. Now, if Peter, if Yeshia, he forgave Peter for denying him three times, what makes you think you can't forgive your uncle who busted in your door when you were five or six or eight, in my case, and did all ungodly things to you?
My uncle sodomized me when I was eight years old. But I forgive him. I don't want to come here. That's tough. Forgiveness. Forgiveness. My uncle did bad things to me when I was a little boy. Things that a grown man should not be doing to a little boy. But I had to forgive him. Or else I wouldn't be standing here. I'd be somewhere angry. He did that to me. Now I'm going to do it to somebody else. See the demons that are inside the mind? I'm using that as an excuse to be homosexual. Right. People do that. All right. Now we learn about the daily bread. Matthew 6.12 says, And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Let's learn about this. Let's learn what Yeshaya was really saying when he said, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Also, you mean to tell me I should forgive APS? What? <laughs> That's not what he's saying. All right? Let's go to Malachi. Oh, Malachi. You don't teach the Tyler now. <laughs> no, we're not going there. <laughs> Malachi chapter 2, verse Ooh, excuse me. Malachi chapter 2 verse 10. <laughs> Malachi 2 and 10. And let's read it. Have we not all one Father? Uh -huh. Hath not the Most High created us? Why do we deal treacherously every man against his brother? Why do we deal treacherously every man against his brother? Go ahead. By profaning the covenant of our fathers? By profaning the covenant of our fathers. Do unto you as you were once done unto yourself. Do unto others as they do unto you. No. Do unto others, others as the, you were once done. Y'all know what I'm trying to say. Treat others the way you want to be treated. Right. <laughs> we are not to treat each other like, wrong. Oh, what? No. <laughs> Bottom line, we are not to treat each other wrong. The Most High does not like it when you treat each other bad. When you say bad things to each other. <laughs> Father don't like it. Let's get Acts 17. <laughs> Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. <laughs> Acts 17, 27 and 28. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. All right, let's read it. That they should seek the Most High, if haply they <coughs> might feel after him and find him, though he be not far off from every one of us. Uh -huh. For in him we live and yeah. move. And have our being, and certain also of your own poets, and have said, and own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. For we are also his offspring. Treat everyone like you would want to be treated. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debts. All right? So basically, forgiving our debts has nothing to do with money. It's about how we treat each other. Let's go to Psalms chapter 18, verse 25 to 26. Psalms 18, 25 and 26. Let's read that. With the merciful thou wilt show thyself merciful, and... With an upright man thou wilt show thyself upright. With the pure thou wilt show thyself pure. Uh -huh. And with the forward thou wilt show thyself forward. That's basically forward. saying how you treat people is what you're going to get back. Well. You be merciful, <clears throat> you'll get show mercy. You be upright, you'll see and show upright. You be pure, you'll see and show pure. But if you want to be forward, you're going to get back forward. Wait, what does it mean by upright? What does it mean when he, when he says, when he said, like, upright to people? 
being upright. Yeah. You're being an upright man. You're, you're, you're treating everyone with kindness and respect. You're being upright. Okay? Forward. That means that you got a mouth on you. You're speaking angrily to people. Bitter. You speak that way to people. You're don't be. Uh, well, why they treat me like that? Well, what was you saying? I said they suck. Okay. Well, now you're getting it back. Same thing. Merciful. Somebody's out in a hot heat, sweating, and you go out and you give them water. That comes back on you. It's also written in the book of life. Just putting it out there. I'm sorry, the book of works. Alright? Forgive our debts has nothing to do with money, but how we treat each other. Well, I got to forgive APS for charging me $380. Yeah, no, that has nothing to do, that's not what Yeshaya said. That's not what he meant when he said forgive our debts. Why would he say give to Caesar what is Caesar's and give to the Most High what's the Most High's? If he's talking about money. Alright? Matthew 5.48 Forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors. Let's read it. Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. Well, I can't be perfect. Ain't no such thing as a perfect person. Ain't no such, right. Ain't no such huh. thing as a perfect person. Come out, liars. We all sin and shall and fall short of the glory of God. Ha! That's if you get a learned Christian. Okay? And Shia said, be ye perfect as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. We should strive to be like Father. We should strive to be like your Shia. We should strive, ladies should strive to be like Rawa Numbers 14. Numbers 14, 1 through 4. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Let's read it. Pardon, I beseech thee the iniquity of this people according unto the greatness of thy mercy. And as thou hast forgiven this people from Egypt even until now. Uh -huh. And the Most High said, I have pardoned according to thy word. Oh, wait a minute. You mean to tell me that all it takes is a prayer from the heart, from Moses, and the Most High decides that he's going to pardon them because the Most High was about to kill them? Yes, he was. He was about to kill every single one of them. Except Moses. Minus Moses. But Moses gave them that prayer. And the Most High said, I have pardoned according to thy word. Forgive your debtors as ye forgive your debts as ye forgive your debtors. Twenty-one. But as truly as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Most High. With the glory. With the glory of the Most High. Even the Most High has to show mercy, or else we all would have been. We all wouldn't be here. If he took out all the children of Israel, none of us would be sitting here. Is that when he took was going to take out them for building the golden calf? Or is this when he um, killed everybody? Well, I guess he did kill everybody. No, no, no. The golden calf, that was one of the answer there. Okay. They did so much in the world. This was their murmuring and complaining. He was going to kill them so many times. He was going to kill them quite yeah, a few times. Nobody repented as much as <laughs> time. All right, let's get the second part of Matthew 6.13. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Because temptation is evil. Okay. This is what you don't pray for, dead soldiers. 
Like for war dead soldiers? Yeah. It doesn't make much sense. It doesn't it makes sense for the person who's against war. They think that, okay, pray for more so then the war can stop. But that's the mark. I'm sorry? I'm here. All right, let's get Psalms chapter 34, verses 11 to 14. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Let's read it. Come, ye children, hearken unto me. I will teach you the fear of the Most High. Uh -huh. What man is it that desireth life and loveth many days, that he may see good? Uh -huh. Keep thy tongue from evil, and thy lips from speaking guile. Uh -huh. Depart from evil, and do good. Seek peace, and, and pursue, pursue it. it. Deliver, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Let's get Luke 10, 19. <coughs> Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nothing by any means shall hurt you. Now that don't mean go reach your hand to a snake pit, right? What's that? That don't mean go reach your hand into a snake pit? No. Or going into the snake house at the zoo. We got this pastor in um, Africa somewhere. He's uh, feeding his people live snakes. Yeah. He's putting them down their throat. They stand there with their mouth open. My and people they're shall perish like for lack of knowledge. And it tastes like apple juice. Right. All right. So Luke 10, 19 said, he, giving, he gives you that power to defeat the devil. Okay. So that means nobody that's in this truth mm -hmm. should be falling back into sin. Because what does it say right there? I'm giving you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. That's so, the devil. It ain't no, this is not Christianity when you when you got that I can't help it. It don't exist. And no, I can't help it. But you have power to fight that devil, to win over that devil. So if he defeat you, that's because you allow him to. And that leads us to our next scripture. There you go. Ephesians 4.27, neither give place to the devil. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. So that means that you know you have a problem with alcohol, but I'm so and so coming over, but she like a cold beer. But I ain't gonna drink it, I'm just having it in my refrigerator because auntie coming over. Mm -hmm. The next thing you know, you over there drunk with auntie. So don't give place to the devil. Right. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. 1 John 5 8. That's not them. Also, let's learn something or learn something. He, his body changed, right? Mm -hmm. So what do you think is going to happen when he comes again and you're not dead? Your body's going to change. Gonna change. They're going to change just like his did on the top of the mountain. Are you Let's go to verse 5. And let's read it. And Peter answered and said to Yeshua, Master, is it good for us to be here? He said, it is good. Peter said, it is good for us to be here. I bet it was. Let's go ahead. And let us make three tabernacles, one for thee and one for Moses and one for Elias. Uh-huh. For he wist not what to say, for they were so afraid. They were trembling. They were so afraid. They weren't afraid in fear, though. What type of what type of afraid do you think they were? Reverence. Reverence. It wasn't fear, like oh my goodness, what are they doing? No. It was fear of reverence. Verse seven. And there was a cloud that overshadowed them, and uh -huh. a voice came out of the cloud saying. This is my beloved son. Hear him. So this cloud came out. 
And this cloud is saying, this is my beloved son, hear him. Now, if a cloud came out from here and started talking, what would you do? I'd be fearful. I would fall on my knees and fearful, but it would be like for respect. Reverence. Uh, reverence. Mm -hmm. Right. Verse 8. And suddenly, when they had looked around about, they saw no man anymore, save Yeshia, only with themselves. So when they looked, after all that has been done, Elijah, Moses were gone. It was just Yeshia in his normal clothes. Why do you think uh, sh why do you think this situation happened? I never knew what led up to this. Mm -hmm. Why would he um the door? Why do you think this happened? This is a Muslim on the back of his cab. Is it here? No, his head is on the mat. Well, it says it's on the mat. It's probably covered, though. Praying. The Shia taught about this. He taught against this. The tan prints are his pants. The black prints are his jacket. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, we know the devil does things for right. This is his head. This is his body. Those are his shoes. And he's praying. And you know, this world is so just whatever. This guy is just walking around. Maybe they're looking at him. But we know the devil is a show off. So. Correct. All right, let's get 1 Chronicles chapter 29, verses 9 through 11. 1 Chronicles chapter 29, verses 9 through 11. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. Amen. Go ahead. Then the people rejoiced, for that they offered willingly. Because with perfect heart they offered willingly to the Most High. And David the king also rejoiced with great joy. Uh huh. Wherefore David blessed the Most High before all the congregation. And David said, Blessed be thou, the Most High power of Israel, our Father, forever and ever. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. Go ahead. Thine, O High, and thy power is the greatness and the power, and the glory, and the victory, and the majesty. For all that is in the heaven and in the earth is thine. Thine is the kingdom, O Ahia, thy power, and thou art exalted as head above all. Now you understand when earlier you tried to say, Thy kingdom come, it's already here. Okay? Let's go to Luke chapter 21, verse 33. Heaven and earth shall pass away. But my word shall not pass away. Thy kingdom, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Now we understand what the Lord's Prayer is about. I know how to pray now. Uh huh. All right. Section two. The Most High wants to answer your prayers. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. 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 W
wait, what? Section two. The Most High wants to answer your prayers. You may not think that he wants to answer it because I pray for this all the time and he doesn't answer me. He don't hear me. He don't listen to me. He don't love me. All that whining and complaining. Let's see. The Most High wants to answer your prayers. Let's go to Jeremiah 23. Verse 30 to 32. Jeremiah chapter 23. Verses 30 to 32. And let's read it. Therefore behold, I am against the prophets, saith the high thy power, that steal my words, every one from his neighbor. That steal my words. Go ahead. Behold, I am against the prophets, saith the high of thy power, that use their tongues, and say, he saith. That's why we don't say, thus saith the Lord. Because the Lord ain't told you that. The Most High ain't came to you and said, this is what I want you to say. Okay? 32. Behold, I am against them that prophesy false dreams. Oh, wait a minute. You start making up dreams and stuff. And then what else? Go ahead. Say at the high of thy power, and do tell them, and cause my people to err by their lies and by their likeness. Yet I sent them not, nor commanded them. Therefore they shall not profit this people at all, say at the high of thy power. That would be your pastors or whomever who claim they have the quote-unquote prophetic gift. Yeah. I saw you get at it. Five hundred dollars. If you tie three hundred. <laughs> Prophesy false dreams. I see you doing this and that, and I see you doing that and this. Don't have anything. It doesn't line up with the Bible at all. I see you have the business, and your business having five thousand dollars. How many times have you heard that? That doesn't. The Most High is not going to give you a prophetic message that does not line up with His Word. So that's how you know when a person is lying. If it doesn't line up with the Bible, then they're proper lying. There's not one scripture in the Bible that says you're going to start a business. Not one scripture in the Bible says that you're going to be wealthy. Think about it for a second. There's not one scripture in the Bible that says that you're going to be well off. And I mean physically, because it does say spiritually that we are going to be wealthy. But don't nobody want to be wealthy spiritually. Because that means you're broke. <laughs> I, I ain't got no money. I got lint in my pockets. Alright? Man. The wickedness of man became great upon the earth until every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. This was not the purpose of the Most High had for his creation. He created us for his glory and that he may fellowship, enjoy fellowshipping with us, wanting us to offer him voluntary love. Not title, I mean, um, um, dictatorship. Let me sum the Get that kiwi, please. Let's get John chapter, I'm sorry, Joel chapter 2, verse four, 12 to 14. Joel chapter 2, verse four, 12 to 14. Let's read it. Therefore also now saith the high of thy power, turn ye even to me with all your heart, uh -huh. and with fasting, and with weeping, and with mourning. Turn to me with all your heart. Go ahead. And rent your heart, and not your garments. So when they rent their garments, the most I don't care about that. He said he wants you to rent your heart. Finish. And turn unto the most high, for he is gracious and merciful. Slow to anger and of great kindness, 
and repented him of the evil. So imagine Yeshia, and he's standing at his first trial. And Caiaphas, remember that? Caiaphas, he's a blasphemer. Remember that? What does the verse 13 says? Rend your heart and not your garment. If Caiaphas was so learned, he would have known not to do that. <laughs> Arr, he's a blasphemer. <laughs> verse 14. Who knoweth if he will return and repent? Return and repent. Go ahead. And leave a blessing behind him. Even a meat offering and a drink offering unto the Most High. So he's saying that just repent. See, before your prayers are answered, there's something you got to do first. You got to change this and this. And you have to repent. Repent, change this, change this. Before your prayers are heard. Because you've lived a sinful life. Even if you're seven and eight, you've lived a sinful life. Okay. John three sixteen, and we know what John three sixteen is about because we did a teaching on John three sixteen. Yes, we did. John three sixteen. Let's read it. For the Most High so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Okay, we taught on John three sixteen. All right. So I don't have to go and explain John 3.16. Thank you. Okay? So the power of prayer cannot be explained but experienced. Right? Come uh, on. Can I say something? Go ahead. You know what this scripture on TV and what they're teaching now that says um, the Most High have other sons, that Yeshua is not the only God's son. Oh, the most high That's what they're teaching in Christianity. Oh, blasphemers! <laughs> <laughs> what is that in scripture? Thank you. It's great It's K.O. and something else, right? Yeah. All right, Second Chronicles chapter seven, and let, let's take our time because this is my favorite. Y'all, as all of you know, this is my favorite scripture. I'll read it then. So, uh, first, Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. And then we'll just throw 15 in there. Let's read it. If my people, which are called by my name, uh -huh. shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin, and will heal their land. Uh-huh, verse 15. Now my eyes shall be opened, and my ears attend unto the prayer. Attend unto the prayer. This is the most high talking. Go ahead. That is made in this place. If you, his people, humble yourself, humble, pray, turn from your wicked ways, he will hear you from heaven. And he will attend unto the prayer. Um, you know also in um, Ecclesiastes 26, mm -hmm. Mother the Holy Spirit also say, the people that I call by the Most High Name, she will give them wisdom as well. Yes. She will come to them. She will give them secrets. Yes. <laughs> Second Chronicles 7.15, he says, Now my eyes shall be open and my ears attend to their prayer. The Most High basically is saying that I gave you a promise and I'll be watching for you to come and I will be listening for your prayer. Okay, that's what the Most High is saying. Just like the earthly father gives his child the desires, your heavenly father will give you your desires. The Bible is filled. We don't have time to go through all the scriptures that this pertains to. All right, but let's get a few of them. Let's get Luke chapter 11, verse 13. Luke 11 and 13. All right, let's read it. If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? So you... Being a father, you being wicked and evil, you'll sit up there and give your child good gifts. 
I'm gonna buy my baby some clothes. Oh, I'm gonna buy my baby some shoes. I'm gonna buy my baby underwear. I'm gonna buy my baby this. I'm gonna buy my baby that. I'm gonna buy, 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 buy. But you are dr a drunkard and a dopehead. Even people who are dopeheads and drunk addicts know how to give their children good gifts. So what better gift can your Father in Heaven give you? Okay, let's go to Isaiah chapter 65, verse 24. And it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. So the, before you even open your mouth, the Most High is going to answer. Go ahead. And while they are yet speaking, I will hear. So while you're into your prayer, he's already getting it answered. Amen. 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 Yes, he did. So before you even you're speaking it, he's already got an answer. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Romans chapter 8, verse 32. So you don't have to sit there and wonder. You are a servant, you are following the most high or higher. Before the thought even comes to your mind, he's setting it up to be answered. Mm, Romans 8.32, let's read it. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? So the Most High gave us the Shia as an offering. How much more can he does with, how much more can he free up things for it? 3. Why does the Most High want you to pray? Why does He want you to pray? To be heard. To be heard. Because when we pray, there should, should be a fire in our heart. Yeah. Let, let, let's let the Bible answer that. So here it is. The answer to this in the very purpose of our being. The Most High made man to praise Him. And to fellowship with him. There are several reasons why the Most High uses prayer as a means to supply our needs and our wants. Let's go to Luke 18 and 1. And he spake a parable unto them to this end. That men ought always to pray and not to faint. Men should pray sometimes. Always pray. For men should pray only once a week. Always pray. Always pray. Come on, everybody. Get look alive. Come on. Always pray. Always. So what about, remember I told you earlier this week, I saw a video of this guy. He called himself praying, and he just went in, and he was like, oh, I love And he just went on and just passed out. And, I was, and the guy that was preaching said, wait a minute, brother. You're a man. You should be strong, and you shouldn't just be fainting and passing out like that. He said, what spirit is that? Yeah, that is a spirit. That is. That's some kind of spirit. Could you not break my window? Thank you. All right. Number one, prayer is a way of starting conversation. Yes. Continuing prayer is, and these are these are key steps. Probably want to make note of. Number one, prayer is a way of starting conversation. Yes. You have to. In order to engage in a with in a conversation with the most high, you have to know how to pray. And you know what? You don't have and this is here's here's a basic prayer. Father, I love. You. Don't get no basic thing that does. Well you can say good morning, Father. Or good morning, Father. Good morning, That's heaven. a prayer. Good morning, heaven. Your prayers don't have to be Father, which art thou in heaven and your masculinity just overflows me in the, the prayer, and I break the bonds of shame. The glory shall follow me. No. Or it's not. I need Father. I need. I need. I need. I need. I need. Father, can you give me? Father, can you have me? Father, Father, can you give me? Father, can you give me? Father, can I have? Can I? Can I? Can I? I want it. Want it. Want it. I need it. Need it. Need it. Father, I need. I need. I want. I want. I need. I need. I want. Father, give me. Give me now. Yeah. No. Like, you know, Father will turn his head from you. Uh, slap. Somebody slap. 
Just say, Father, good morning. That's a prayer. Father, thank you for today. That's a prayer. Okay? Number two. Prayer enables the mind of the Most High to flow through our minds. Yes. In Philippians 2 5, it says, Let this mind be in you, which is also in your shy. Okay? When two people talk, their minds engage. That's why you should not have filthy conversations with people. That's right. Be mindful. Somebody talking nasty and dirty, then all of a sudden you start talking nasty and dirty. Visualizing it. You're in the same mind with them. Mm -hmm. Okay? So if you're praying and talking to the Most High, then the Most High mind is going to come to you. All right. Christians say this all the time. Faith. The size of a mustard seed, all things are possible. They have no clue what they're talking about, obviously. Number three, prayer makes the journey more enjoyable often than the destination. You ever pray and you feel so joy over praying that when Father answers the prayer, the prayer was better than the answer? Probably not, because y'all don't pray, do you? No, I have. Yeah, I just felt that way today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You go into prayer and you ask Father for something, and then that prayer is more enjoyable than you getting your answer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can agree with that. Okay. Number four. Prayer makes always makes the most high provision a delightful surprise. Because sometimes when we pray for things or pray for whatever it is that we pray for and we don't get it right away but we get it later. It's a surprise. Wow. I wasn't even expecting this. Mm -hmm. But I love it. Or you pray for you pray for somebody and the most I know is your wants, and you never once said anything about it. But he just answered one of your wants because you prayed for somebody else. All right? Five. The use of prayer is a means whereby the most I supplies our needs and prevent us from taking the most I for granted. That's another one. While the Israelites were in the wilderness, the, the, the Most High could have sent them manna for days and weeks. But he only sent them manna enough for a day. Because after that day, that manna turned into worms. Because they, had, he, they kept constantly having to pray. Because if the Most High gave you everything that you wanted now, you won't have a need for them. Therefore, you took them for granted. Yeah. Okay? Let's find out what's the original purpose for prayer. Section 4. What is the original purpose for prayer? Alright. Man was given dominion over all the earth. He was the Most High's representative. The Most High gave him two main purposes. Fellowship and word. Because of the fellowship and the work, the Most High gave man dominion. Okay? As the Most High earthly creation, man had to apply his needs and carry out his work. This applying was prayer. Now the prayers of man had to have two prerequisites. Fellowship and and work. Those are the two prerequisites to prayer. Fellowshipping the Father, because you got to talk to Father. And also finding out what He wants you to do for the kingdom. Those are the two things that you should be praying about. Notice no shirts, no ties, no praying for a better wife, no praying for a better husband. 
No praying for obedient children because your children are very disobedient and ruling. Proverbs tell us to do it again. Proverbs tell us to take a belt to them. All right. Be the power of prayer in the time of trouble. But see, what happened is that man sinned and he fell. And when he fell, the fellowship with the Most High was broken. Not the Most High in the garden would be with him and Yeshia, Adam, walking in the garden. Not no more. Let's get Genesis 1.26. And the height of thy power said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. If you're going to do a, if you're going to do a, a what are the notes called when you read something in school? A book? Cornell notes. Cliff notes? No, Cornell notes. Cornell notes? Yeah. If you're going to Cornell note that? Annotate? Annotate, that's what it is. Thank you. If you're going to annotate that? Then all you have to do is say, and the higher thy power said, let us make man in our image after his likeness and the kingdom. And have the kingdom. Well, yeah, because originally we all know that Adam and Eve were a woman, a man and a woman of color. The Most High actually made the kingdom for us. He didn't, even, he didn't make it for Esau, he made it for us. Right. Right. Because we made some dirt, we'll come All right, let's get John 14, 12. John chapter 14, verse 12, and let's read it. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works that, than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. The works that I do, the works that I do, he shall he do also. You should be praying with their hands and they shall be whole. You shall be praying people who are blind and all of a sudden they see. The deaf can hear. And I know that because there was one guy who I prayed for who was deaf and he heard. So I've seen that power. John 15, 7. Let's read it. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. All you have to do is just ask. You live by the word. If you abide by the words that the Shia said, all you do is ask, and it'll be done. John 15, 16. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and ordained you, that uh -huh. ye should go and bring forth fruit, mm -hmm. and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. Notice he, he said may. may. He didn't say will, he said may. Because you don't know what you want. You don't know what you want. Only the Father knows our Okay. Perhaps the depth of his teaching should be as the following. Number one, man was created and given dominion over the earth. Number two, in return for this dominion and power, he was asked to give the most high fellowship and work. So there's something, there's always a if when it comes to the most high. I'll give you this power over the earth. If you fellowship with me, that's a win-win situation. I mean, to me, it's a win-win situation. Yeah. Number three, because he had the, this dominion and fellowship and work, it was necessary for him to pray to receive the needs to carry out the work. The only prerequisite of prayer were fellowship and work. But man fell, sin broke the fellowship. The Most High planned a way of restoration, and that restoration is the Shia. 
He redeemed man as the first creature and the second creature. You know what I mean by that when I say that, right? He redeemed the first creature and the second creature. Us and the animals. Right. And made one for dominion and that one who is dominated. The one have fellowship and work. Whatever degree man fellowships with the Most High and works for a higher, he will have dominion again. Because he has dominion, he wants to pray again. Since prayer is needed by dominion, and dominion is allowed by fellowship and work, to whatever degree man abides in the Shia and works, the Most High gives the man dominion. And the millennium will restore that dominion completely because it restores the fellowship and work completely. Thus, total dependence on the Shia and our desire to requisition him for our needs. Prayer. So even in the new millennium, we're going to be praying. Yes. We're still going to be praying. Section 5. Answer prayer depends on a changeless ahad. This will be the last section. Hebrews 13 and 8. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh. All right, let's read Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8. Let's read it. <clears throat> Yeshua is the same yesterday and today and forever. Okay, very simple scripture, right? Yeshua is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hebrews 13 and 8, we find that Yeshua the Son does not change. Yeshua the same yesterday, today, and forever. Then we find that the Spirit is called the eternal spirit, hence the Holy, the Most High, the Holy Spirit does not change either. That means the Most High doesn't change. If the Son doesn't change, and the Mother doesn't change, the Father doesn't change either. Malachi 3, 6 says, For I am the Most High, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob, are not consumed. Most I don't change. Alright, after observing this, it is because of his changelessness that he answers prayer. Just think if the Most High had a double mind. Think of that for a second. If the Most High had a double mind, and every time you go, no, nah, I'm not going to do that today. No. Nah. Even though it lines up with my word, no. Because you weren't doing this yesterday. The Most High don't change. The Shia don't change. Wawa wa, never change. They don't, they're not changing. That's what's, that's what's, Beautiful about the gospel. Okay? We ought to pray boldly. Right? Luke 11 and 1. Luke chapter 11, verse 1. Let's read it. And it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray as John also taught his disciples. So that prayer must have been something else. Because the disciples can teach us how to pray. And he did that with the Lord's prayer. First thing that you should have asked when you first got into walk, into this walk, how how do I pray? That's the first thing you should have asked. 
how do I pray? I asked the pastor that once, and he told me, well, you, you just talk to God. Stay prayerful. You stay prayerful. You talk to God. I.e., you really don't know how to pray, do you, Pastor Duncan? Right? You really don't know how to pray. Let's get Matthew 7 7. Matthew chapter 7, verse 7. Let's read it. Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. But there's an if to that. <laughs> if you're following the law, statutes, and commandments. If you're not following the law, statutes, and commandments, then you can ask all you want, but it ain't just lost. You can knock, and there ain't nothing going to be open to you. Christianity tries to flip it to where it don't matter if you're just a sinful person or not. If you got a heart that's for God, then He'll answer your prayer. But if you're a sinner, your heart is not for the Most High. No. The Most High ain't hearing your prayers according to Proverbs, the first chapter. Let's get Isaiah 59 and 1. Isaiah 59 and 1. And you know what? When you're praying, let's read the scripture first. Behold, the Most High's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, neither his ear heavy, that it cannot hear. So the Most High is not burdened down with your prayers. I just, I just pray too much. What? Ezekiel 14, 3. Ezekiel chapter 14, verse 3. Let's read it. Son of man, these men have set up their idols in their heart and put the stumbling block of their iniquity before their face. Should I be inquired of all, of at all by men, uh, by them? By them. Okay. Of at all by them. Should I be inquired of them? Same thing we just said five seconds ago. The Most High does not hear prayers of sinners. The Most High is not going to hear you if you place clothes, money, pride of a relationship before Him. You know there is sin in your life. Many people know there is sin in their lives, yet ask the Most High to bless them. It's crazy. Luke 18, 13. Luke chapter 18, verse 13. Well, let's read it. And the publican standing afar off would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, the Most High be merciful to me, a sinner. That person is going to go to, to Abraham's bosom before the Pharisee who was standing next to him and said, I do this, I do that, I do this, I do that. At least I'm not like this guy. The moment you start criticizing somebody, the moment you're no more than a Pharisee yourself. I do this, I do that, I'm great, I'm this, I'm not like that person. People say she's a good woman, but a worldly Hebrew. You might as well be speaking of a heavenly devil. You might as well expect a monk, a mummy to bear children. Prayer draw you nearer to the most high. Learning of Yeshua. Let's take a few examples from the life of Yeshia and Mark 
we learn that he rose up early in the morning and went out to solitary place and prayed. Okay. What's that? The Lord ain't. All right, let's go to Mark chapter 1, verse 35. Every morning you should do, every, when you wake up in the morning, this should be the first thing. I'm not saying go out to a solitary place, but this is what you should do every morning. Let's read Mark 1, 35. And in the morning, rising up a great while before day, he went out and departed into a solitary place and there prayed. So, the most high, I mean, you're shy. When it says rising up in a great while before day, that means it was still kind of dark outside when he went out. And he went to pray. He didn't wait till 10, 11 o'clock in the morning and got up, wrote the sleep out of his eyes and went up and prayed. It's to say, this is the same scripture in Proverbs where it tells a man to get up early. Okay? Not like this guy. One guy is praying. I don't know if that's a guy or a girl. It looks like an old woman. She's eating. She's reading a book. And he's grabbing his food. Corn is drink. Oh, corn is drink. This guy is the only one doing what he's supposed to do. Right here. Everybody in this, in this picture have their own agenda. You're supposed to pray before you eat. Mm. Yeah, I mean, Every single time. They sit there, have that. Ooh! Y'all, you're supposed to pray before God you is good. eat. God is great. Let us pray. He began every day with prayer, the Shia. You never give up without, you never get up without dressing. You never forget to wash your face and comb your hair. You always think of breakfast and feed your physical body, but then you starve your spiritual body. Nobody woke, woke up this morning and walked out the house naked. Nobody. Maybe one of you attempted to do that. <laughs> but nobody did that, right? Anybody wake up this morning and forget to wash their face or brush their teeth? <laughs> oh, goodness. This is a bad example. <laughs> Let's go on. You got to be reminded. It is an insult to the Most High and a disgrace to allow children to grow up without Hebrew influences around them. Seven tenths of professing Israelites have no family prayers and do not read the Bible. It is no wonder boys and girls are going to hell. Okay. Pride hinders prayer. Pride keeps us from properly praying. Being chesty and big headed is responsible for more failures than anything else. It has spoiled many preachers. Some people get a job in about two weeks. They think about doing the boss, what the boss does. You get a job, and then two weeks later, I can do this better than him. It's ridiculous. There are two things to guard against. Don't get chesty over success or discouraged over defeat. Don't get all puffed up because, the, because you're being blessed. Oh, and yeah. don't think because and don't get all beat up on yourself because you know you you going through two trials. Don't do that. Okay? Why? Let's go to Luke 9 29. Let's go to Luke 9 29. Let's read it. And as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered, and his remnant was white and glistering. As he prayed, the remnant of it was white, and he glistened. Sometimes you can transform your own body just by praying to Father. Look, I have a testimony about that. Go ahead. One day I was in school, and uh, I... I have, you called me and 
I think it was a film or something. Mm -hmm. And I prayed for you. And then after I got to praying for you, I went into the um, advisor's office. And the lady in there, she said, you've been praying, haven't you? And I said, yeah, how do you know? She said, you could just see the glow. You could see the listening. You could see the Holy Spirit on you. Mm -hmm. And this woman didn't even know me. That she didn't know like, what we do, you know. If you pray, and you pray honestly, yeah. your, your body transforms. Yeshaya showed us that. Alright? Ladies, do you want to look pretty? If some of you women would spend less time on dope and cold cream and get down on your knees and pray, the most high would make you pretty. Okay? This is what I mean when I say it. I can tell when you're praying. I know when you're praying. I know when you're reading your scriptures. Your face tells it all. Not a face like that. But your face tells it all. Because I don't know what she thinks you're drinking because it's good. Your face tells it all. Your body tells it all. Even the scent off your body tells it. Yes, it does. You can sit up there and wash and put on all kinds of perfume and uh, whatever. But your scent tells it all. Okay? Praying in secret. Let's revisit Matthew 6.6. 6. You have to pray in secret. Let's read it. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. And when thou hast shut thy door, pray to the fa thy father, which is in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. That's right. Father, he sees it in secret. Not standing out there on the on the edge of the wall. Oh, Father, art thou in heaven? No. Luke 18.10. Two men went up into the temple to pray, the one a Pharisee and the other a publican. One a Pharisee, the other a publican. So notice the progression. This is from 2 Chronicles 7.14. Humble yourself, pray, seek the most high space, turn from sin. Okay? Sounds so easy. It does. Stop going to school. It ends up Okay. Exactly. People who don't follow that, they don't want the Most High's kingdom to come. It is not so that half the people that pray. I say to you, when you pray in the church pew and you say it don't, it don't count a snap of my finger if you don't live. You pray thy kingdom come, and then you go out and do something to prevent the kingdom from coming. No man can get down and say thy kingdom come and have a beer wagon backed up to his truck and put the beer in the refrigerator. No man can get on his knees and say thy kingdom come and look through the bottom of a beer glass. The Most High won't stand for it. If you wanted the Most High's will to be done, you would do the Most High's will even if it took every drop of blood in your body to do it. A man who truly prays thy kingdom come cannot take his heart out of his prayer when he is out of the church. A man who truly prays thy kingdom come from putting chalk in the flour, sand in the sugar, brick dust and red pepper, ground peanut shells and breakfast food. I'm quoting this from a sermon. Wow. A man who truly said, prays, thy kingdom come, cannot pass a bar and ask himself a question, what can I do to get rid of that thing that is blinding the lives of thousands of young men, that is wrecking homes, and that is dragging men and women down a hill? You cannot pray, thy kingdom come, and then rush to the polls and vote for the thing that is preventing the kingdom from coming. You cannot pray thy kingdom come and then go and do the things that make the devil laugh. For 
the man who prays, who truly prays thy kingdom come, it would be impossible to have one kind of religion on his knees and another kind when he's behind the counter. It would be impossible to have one kind of religion in the pew and another in politics. If a man truly prays thy kingdom come, he means it in everything or nothing. Many a man prays when he's in a hole. Many a man prays when he's up against it. Many a man prays in the time of trouble. But when he can stick his thumbs in his armholes and take a pair of scissors and cut coupons off, then it's goodbye, the Most High. We'll see. I'll see you later. Many a man will make promises to the Most High in his extremity, but forget them in his prosperity. Many a man will make promises to the Most High when the hearse is backed up to the door to carry the baby out, but will soon forget the promises made in the days of adversity. Many a man will make promises when lying on his back, thinking he's going to die, and load up just the same when he is on his feet. That was a prayer by Billy Sunday. Huh? Prayer made simple. Colossians 4.12. We're almost done. Hey friends, who is one of you, a servant of Yeshia, saluteth you, always laboring fervently for you in prayers, that you may stand perfect and complete in all the will of the Most High? Uh-huh. 1 Thessalonians 5.17. Pray without ceasing. Very simple. Pray without ceasing. Right? Uh, here's how not to pray. <laughs> Thank you for helping me find my car keys. <laughs> no. Thank you for letting me throw that touchdown. I'm not thinking against the flea. Might be trying. Okay. Saying thank you Jesus. And not praying. Thank you Jesus. And not praying for this child. Well, no who the Edomites are destroying. Okay? Psalms 145, verse 9. A height of thy power is good to all, and his tender mercies are over all his works. There's another one. They think they're doing something. No prayer. Okay. Philippians chapter 2, verse 4 and 5. Look, not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Yeshia. Let this mind be in you, which is also in Yeshia. Prayer is love. You love me? Okay. Prayer is love. What is love? Love is a person wanting to see another need filled and wanting to be the one who fills those needs and wanting that person to fill all of his needs. There you go. Okay. But love is much more than that. Love, is, love is, a door, is the doorway through which human soul passes from selfishness to service. Okay? From being selfish to service. That's love. Love is the key to the universe which unlocks all doors. Love is that which gives, gives it all, yet still has a little more to give. Love is that which causes us to look at another's faults through a microscope and look at your own through a microscope, through a telescope. Okay? Love is the medicine that cures hatred, malice, envy, jealousy. Love is the medicine that cures that. 
Love is the marriage of the soul. But love is more than that. Love is the divine vitality that enriches and restores like to mankind, strengthens the weak, and lifts up those that are fallen. Love is the sacred flower plucked from the Most High's garden of graces whose early bud is happiness and it starts to bloom. Love is not blind yet because it sees more. It is willing to see less and volunteer blindness. This is love. Love is a secured yawn and twinkle eye in speaking silence. What is love? A love is a mother saying, I don't want any, and a dad that gets up at work at daybreak. That's what love is. Love is that which two people, thousands of miles apart, can watch at sunrise together. Yet, love is much more than that. What is love? Love is that those two people, and they reach in the bag for the same popcorn. Okay? Let's get Toby, <laughs> chapter 13. This is our last scripture. Toby, chapter 13, verses 10 through 15. Let's read it. Give praise to a higher thy power, for he is good, and praise the everlasting king, that his tabernacle may be builded in thee again with joy, and let him make joyful therefore in thee those that are captives, and love in thee forever those that are miserable. Uh-huh. Eleven. Many nations shall come from far to the name of Ohio thy power, with gifts in their hands, even gifts to the king of heaven. All generations shall praise thee with great joy. Uh-huh. Twelve. Cursed are all they which hate thee, and blessed shall all be... Oh, sh shall I get? And blessed shall all be which love thee forever. Verse 13, Rejoice and be glad for the children of the just, for they shall be gathered together and shall bless the Most High of the just. Oh, blessed are they which love thee, for they shall rejoice in thy peace. Blessed are they which have been sorrowful for all thy scourges, for they shall rejoice for thee. Uh -huh. When they have seen all thy glory, it shall be glad forever. Shall be glad forever. Verse 15. Let my soul bless a higher thy power, the great king. Let my soul bless a higher thy yes. power, the great king. What is love? The most high is love. That's right. Love is an indefinable word, that indescribable scene, that unfathomable depth, that unreachable height, that unknowable fact, yet. All the speakers with their eloquence and all the artists with their brushes and the sculptors with their chisels, writers with their quills and pens have not been able to describe love because love is a high. A high. It's shallow. That is no word. Not a word? <laughs> all right. So this was probably the most in-depth teaching of Shah Ohio. I thank you, Shia, for teaching us how to pray. And we give glory to Rabawak the Holy Spirit, who has a dual job. Because not only does she show us how to pray, but guess who delivers the prayers to Father? We're going to learn that when we learn about Rawak, the Holy Spirit. She takes the prayers and she gives them to Father. Just like the mother who the child says, Mommy, can I have this? Well, i got to go ask your Father. Okay? All praises be to the Most High. Uh, higher, Shire, higher. We thank you, Shire, and we give glory to Rawak, the Holy Spirit. Next week, we're going to teach on tithing. Your pastors may not want you to watch it. So we give all glory and praises to the Father. Quam Yasharala. Quam Yasharala.